Jamaria? And everything that is in the universe is also within us. So the macrocosm of the universe is also in us. And so all those external factors also influence us internally, right? And so that kind of leads us to this whole idea about the moon. This is a lot of just because, you know, I'm the, I have to add this kind of background information. I won't read everything to y'all, but um, what is really important and yes, Disha, thank you. What's really important for us to help our clients understand is that the, um, the moon actually makes the earth a more livable planet by moderating our whole, our planets, uh, the way it moves on the axis. And so that's what leads to this relatively stable climate. It also, as we know, causes the ties and creates that rhythm um, that we've followed for centuries, right? Since, since the beginning of time, right? So the earth and the moon are tidally locked. Their rotations are so in sync um, that we only see one side of the moon. I didn't know if y'all knew that or not, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Pardon me? <laughs> oh, exactly. That shows, that shows my age. <laughs> so um, our moon actually doesn't shine, it reflects, right? So just like the daytime here on Earth, sunlight illuminates the moon. We just can't always see it. So we always see the same side of the moon because as the moon revolves around the Earth, the moon rotates so that the same side is all always facing the Earth, right? But it just looks like the moon um, looks a little different every night. Okay, so sometimes the entire face glows brightly, but sometimes we can only see a thin crescent, right? And other times the moon, we just don't seem to see it at all, right? And that's the new moon. So as the bright parts of the moon does appear to change shape during the month, each stage of the change is called a phase. And we're gonna have a fun activity on the moon phases, right? And each phase carries its own name and energetics that influences all of us. So when the sun hits the moon's far side, the side we can't see without, without from the earth and the aid of spacecraft is called the new moon, right? Because we can't see it. And then when the sunlight reflects off the near side, we call it a full moon. And then the rest of the month, we see just parts, right? Of the daytime side of the moon or the, or the phases. So that's just some background information. So here's our fun activity, our first one. So we're gonna pass these out. So on a I want everybody to have a piece of paper and then you're gonna write down the name of the, the phase, phase. What I want you to do is I want you to fold the paper in half like this. And so on this side, I have all the phases listed here. And this is where you're gonna take notes as I'm talking to y'all right now, okay? Don't do anything with the blank side, with the other half of the page. And you'll know. Okay, so the first phase we're going to talk about is the new moon. Okay, so take notes on that half of the side of your page. So the new moon, um, the moon is almost directly between the sun and the earth, and that's the start of the cycle. So that might be helpful to write down that that's the start of the cycle, the new moon. So, yes. Tomorrow, Mike. Oh, just getting to hear about it. Sorry. Okay. So when the moon is visible, it signals that all has been cleared and it's time to have a new beginning. The new moon signifies stability, rebirth, potential and stillness. It's usually when the spiritual energies work at, at their best. So making affirmations, setting intentions, creating positivity around um, you and even working on your to-do list that can, soon, that can soon turn your affirmations into reality. It's thought to be a good time to gather ideas, thoughts, and plan ahead for the coming months or so. So whatever resonated with you, what I just read, take those notes on and right under the, the this phase, the new moon phase. It's almost directly between the sun and the earth. Yep, yeah, it's the start of the cycle. Okay, that's the new moon. All right, so the waxing crescent, so a bit of the, of the sunlit side of the moon shows on the right side, okay? A bit of the sunlight, sunlit side of the moon shows on the right side. And you can see, um, this picture here is kind of dark, but you can see it. So what's going on during this waxing crescent moon phase? Um, it represents progress and growth, 
think about this as a time as planting for planting a seed. The new moon gave you a chance to think about what it is that you want to accomplish, but the waxing crescent asks us to make it known and to develop our willpower to push it into fruition. The waxing crescent makes us uh, makes asks us to make it known and develop our willpower to push it to fruition. Yes, we yes, she's recording. All right, and now then we move to the first quarter. And the first quarter is here at the top. Um, right up here. So what's going on during this time, the moon is a quarter of its way around the earth. And so that's why it's called the first quarter phase, okay? So when the moon looks like it's cut in half, it signals that action is ready to be taken. If we discover any obstacles that block our path, we have to be steadfast and overcome them. It's six, so the qu first quarter moon signals that action is ready to be taken. And if any obstacles come our way, we have to just stay steadfast and overcome them. Am I going too fast? No? Because y'all just pick up those keywords, things that are resonating with y'all, okay? So then the waxing gibbous moon is next. So you can see up here how it looks. So the moon is increasing in light between a first quarter moon and the full moon, okay? So the waxing gibbous moon um, is there when we're close to our goals, but we need to assess their viability. And perhaps your original desire is not possible at this time, but a different version of it is. So sometimes we just have to be open, right? That's why they say you set a goal, but don't always get stuck on the path to get you there, right? Because you may have, you may be thinking you're gonna go this way and the universe is pulling you this way. You're still gonna get there, but it may just look, your journey may look a little different, right? All right, so the full moon. So two weeks have passed since the new moon. So now we see the entire face of the moon shining. So the entire face of the moon is shining. It's also known as the harvest moon. And so as the name suggests, it's time to receive the gifts from your past intentions and even your current one, if you're lucky. So from this period, the moon will go from waxing to waning, signaling your, our journey to look inward instead of out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is the full moon. This is the, yeah, yeah. So the, the, are we done there? Okay, so now we're moving into the waning phase, right? So the, the phases of the waning mood include the waning gibbous, and we're going to talk about that the last quarter and then the waning crescent. The, the, this moon phase symbolizes release and surrender. So think about the waning. What we're going to be talking about the next three phases, thinking about releasing and surrendering. The waning moon is a great time for cleansing and decluttering your mind, perfect time to self-introspect, you know, take quiet time. So the waning gibbous moon, okay? And that is here. The waning gibbous moon, um, the moon is decreasing in light between the full moon and the last quarter moon. While your actions and reactions are still clear in your memory, it's a good time to reflect. So this is a good time to reflect. So this stage is like a waxing mirror. Um, it's also one for refining. Um, but at this time, instead of looking at events, what you and what you can do, think about how you feel. Again, the waning period is all about looking internally, looking internally. And then the uh, third quarter moon or the last quarter, the moon is three quarters of its way around the earth. And that's why it's called the last quarter phase. So 
after thinking about your internal compass in the last phase, right? Now it's time to release and let go of those habits, those thought processes that hold you back. Forgive yourself and cleanse in preparation for the next phase. Yep, this is the third quarter. Yep. So it's time to release, let go of those habits and thought processes that, that hold you back. Forgive yourself and cleanse in preparation for the next phase. And that's the waning crescent moon. Um, a bit of the waning sunlit sin side of the moon shows on the left side. And this is actually a really good time for recuperation. Yep, it's um, a good time for recuperation to be fully open to the next cycle. One must completely be relieved from this one, right? You're done with this cycle. So you wanna, you wanna just start, just recuperate and you wanna be open to what lies ahead. All right, and then the cycle repeats, right? So um, how many of y'all have done any work with affirmations? So, okay, so how do you, everybody, I want to hear, how do you use affirmations? In which way? Okay, so in the mornings for her day, a part of her setting, intention setting for the day, and you're? I love that. Okay, so incorporated into jewelry, self-talk. Um, so I love that. Anybody else want to share? Yes, Jesse. I said tapping. Tapping, yeah. incorporating affirmations, repeating affirmations with tapping. Yeah, and I try to um, do it in a way where they settle in. So if I'm working like with the communicators, I'll start with like maybe at 10 times a day and then increase, increase, increase um, until the thing is done. It's kind of like a reprogramming of like my brain to be thinking of the tapping. So that's awesome. So Jesse's really uh, combined the tapping with the repeating affirmations with the moon cycles. That I love that. Anybody else want to share? I love the moon cycle because I know that that is a very very memorable cycle because the moon energy is different when they are full moon versus the low moon. So uh, whenever that uh, full moon and the low moon time impacts our body and body. So Nandindi uses uh, the considerations of the lunar phases with the yoga practice. And so Marion, you, uh, oh, how cool. She organized a book club with a book, um, book Moon Magic two years ago and followed the cycles, awesome. So actually scientific studies have actually shown that um, affirmations can be effective um, and actually can help during the healing process and just for um, overall emotional well-being. Um, but actually neuroscience has also um, proven that repeating affirmations can literally change your brain structure um, and the function of the brain. So now what I want you to do with the other half of your page, I want you to open up your page now and very quickly. And then I want you on the other, the side that's blank. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so the third quarter, um, it, after thinking carefully about your internal compass in the last phase, now it's time to release and let go of those habits and thought process that hold you back. Forgive yourself and cleanse in preparation for the next cycle. And then the waning crescent moon is a time for recuperation and to be open to the next cycle. So now open up your piece of paper. Can I just, that won't be, that's okay. So, um, Y'all can see on this side now, that's blank. I want you to write very quickly one affirmation for each of the lunar phases. So you walk away today with an affirmation. And I'm so programmed that I already want to write the ones that I do. It's okay. If that's, if that's what's working with you, go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's a, Yeah. Try 
And then everyone in the chat box, if y'all can um, write one of your affirmations, and then what you'll do is just say, like in the chat box, new moon. Oh, I can't type. New, and whichever one, this is just an example. I'm not saying you use this. New moon. Oh my gosh. And then you just write your affirmation. So if everybody who's on Zoom, just pick any of the of the phases and then write what your affirmation is. And so this is just another way you can work with clients because there's some clients who really open up to crystal who are open to crystals they're open to all this and if it works for them and then it's going to work for them right because they believe in this. So can somebody start in the chat box just write one don't wait to finish all of the new moon Sangeeta I am capable of being disciplined love it. Anybody else? New moon, my life is full of potential, Marion. The universe supports me in any way. Oh, I like that one. Brianne, uh, first quarter, I have the power to create what I want. Ooh, I like that one. Gianthi, let me go back. New moon, praying to ancestors for all that they have given me. That's beautiful, Jayanti. Disha, new moon, start. I am on right path in my career and help reach my health goals. Nice. And so this is like an exercise that you can go through with your clients as well, right? Rather than you giving prescriptive affirmations, like, you know, it's, it's more powerful for them to create their own affirmations because that's what's gonna resonate with them. You can give them examples for sure. Um, but um, any time that we want to empower our clients and give them control is better. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go around here the room, um, and I would like everybody to come to and share with uh, everyone on Zoom one of their affirmations. So, but if y'all can quickly come over here so they can hear you with the microphone. So, you want to come? Even if you're not finished, just pick one to come and share. Okay, Jesse, you'll be next. So for the new moon, um, for the new moon, um, I wrote that I want to be more risky um, because I need to actually gather ideas and set intentions and not um, like without limitations. Okay, Jesse. For um, the waxing moon, I am focused and move with ease. Awesome. I think I need to steal that one. I keep it simple. Oh, yeah, you have to, right? Okay, I need to put for the new moon, I am disciplined. The universe will reward persistence. Ooh, Ooh I like that. Uh, for the new moon, I will preserve joy. Oh, okay. Uh, the last one, the vaccine one, that's going to be like in let it go, the feeling of holiness. Oh, I like that. Uh, waning crescent moon, I will rest and be open. Oh, I like that one. Say it again. I will rest and be open. Ooh. I like that. That's all right. Well, I hope you all found that um, fun. Just kind of want to break up rather than just lecture, you know, just talking all the time. So feel free to go back and take that back and just reflect on it and see what that um, what those look like and what they if you start using them with the different phases of the moon, um, how it might impact. Um, Indria also write um, waxing. I am active and making progress in right direction. I like that. I like that one. So what's the connection with our, with, uh, with our practice as Ayurveda counselors and practitioners? So the lunar phases, like Manjulali already mentioned, they're very ext extremely important for the Ayurveda pract uh, practitioner because we actually follow the lunar calendar and Vedic timekeeping. And um, hopefully Manjulali will come back so she can explain this very complex um, calendar. Um, we actually will harvest and um, our herbs, the, the, the Dravya must be according to the lunar phases. 
for example, the Zdravia with Rasa and Maximum Nutrition that's used for the uh, Brehona or the nourishing therapies are harvested around a full moon. Um, if we want to do a detoxi detoxification, um, we should be ideally um, done from a dark fortnight. Um, if we want to increase nutrition um, and use for tonifying therapies, um, it should be done at a light fortnight. We can use the lunar days and the rays of the moonlight to strengthen the potency of the herbs, water, um, cleansing the spiritual uh, rituals. Um, we can actually uh, take our Ayurvedic and spiritual practice to whole new level during util utilizing these, uh, these lunar phases. So there's a lot of implications. This is the Vedic timekeeping lunar uh, month. So in Ayurveda, we follow a two-part 15-day lunar month, and each of the day of the lunar month is called a titi, like she was talking about. It's a duration of two phases of the moon that's observed from the earth. Um, and you can see all the, the way that they're listed here on the table. And it begins again from day one and after day 15. So that's a lot of information. Um, I'll ask Manjali to review. Um, uh, a little bit later. So the lunar day, these um, observing these titties have special powers. Each, yes, Marion, we're going to share, she'll sh share the slide deck on, on Slack. Each lunar day or titi has special powers to help support, heal, or destroy. I'm um, actually even can cause disease or aggravate certain situations, right? They influence the mind um, and they, uh, these, this lunar, um, they influence, they can last up to two days in our mind. So this is pretty powerful. Yes, you're gonna say um, something. It's true. I mean, there's still all that lunar energy really, really does, does affect us. And so when you're working with clients, this is just one more piece of the puzzle. Like say you have a client that you're going to see today. Well, take a moment to find out what, what, what lunar phase are we in? Look at this calendar that, that Manjali is going to share with you on the titties. And so then when you work with your client, you can like, that's just another piece of the puzzle, right? Just like Marma, like everything else that we do. Yes, Jesse. I don't want to freak anybody out about parasites for a minute. So I've been obsessed with talking about parasites lately because yeah. I've been doing all of this research. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I've been obsessed with talking about parasites lately um, and how they're in our water and in our foods. It doesn't matter if you eat meat or if you're a vegetarian. And I'm just starting in, to get into like what parasite cleansing really looks like and how it makes you feel mentally and um, spiritually and physically and cravings and all of that stuff. Anyway, I travel a lot and I'm like in the midst of doing a parasite cleanse right now. And I've learned that uh, to, when you wanna start one, you should start it on the new moon and they go crazy during the full moon, which is why what you were saying, you might sometimes feel like a little bit more emotional because they do um, attack like your feelings. Sorry, sorry, everybody, do your parasite research. Okay, bye. So, and uh, you know that we always say stuff like you know, mental health directly connects to the because uh, because if you are uh, deeper uh, down into the asana practice, if you're mentally stable, like according to the new uh, energy, then you might push yourself and you may be connected to the other side of the asana practice. So, that's why we always. So there's a lot of implications, y'all, when, when it comes to all these lunar phases and the lunar energies. It's, I know with the, the equinox, like this whole, pi, the, the whole time, like I have had, I've been struggling. Like I've just, there's just been, and I think it's just the energy in the moon and what's going on, I think, cause now we're like in Pluto or something. So um, the other thing that we also wanna look at is that fasting on certain lunar days actually can help destroy bad karma from our previous lives and can set a new trajectory and blueprint for our life in case that's something that you're interested into. Ekasadi, Ekadashi. Ekadashi. 
Yes, and so this is on the 11th and the 12th day of the moon. So the 11th day of the moon, four days before the dark moon, right? Um, this is when uh, it's called Ikadashi. So fasting on this day from grains, legumes, and eating a light diet of fruits and veggie soups clears out um, energy, right? And it actually gives our GI tract a break from digestion also. It can help balance your agni, burns away any heavy karmic energy from um, previous lives and increase um, the intensity and efficacy of, of the one day de detoxification. And this is something that Manjulali always does. And um, it's, it's interesting because somebody follows this. I don't know who it is, but on Instagram, they're always like, oh, tomorrow is Ikatadi. So it's like always a reminder to me, Ikatashi, Ikatashi, Ikatashi. And and that's exactly what Jayanthi is writing in the chat box. And so fasting on the 12th day of the moon, three days before the dark or full moon can also uh, be followed with similar results, right? Even though Ikadashi is the most powerful. And then um, fasting on the full moon is not suggested except in a few um, suggestions. So I'm not going to go through this completely, but I just thought it'd be interesting because there's a lot of other um, beliefs and traditions and things that we can do during a lunar eclipse period, right? So this was just kind of showing um, what actually is happening during a, sooner, a lunar eclipse. Okay, so dur during the lunar eclipse, the earth comes between the sun and the moon, blocking the sunlight from falling on the moon. And that's why it, well, that's why you don't see the moon or parts of the moon, right? And so you can either have a total eclipse or a partial um, lunar eclipse. Like the earth blocking its own sunlight. The earth comes between the sun and the moon, right? And so then that's why the sun is, the sunlight's blocking, it's not reflecting on the moon. Yeah. So, um, this, I thought that was kind of, I'd like to throw these random fun facts in, but um, it was actually uh, likely formed after a Mars sized body collided with the Earth. The moon is the Earth's only natural satellite and it goes around the Earth. Um, and we did not see the lunar fa far side until a Soviet space uh, spacecraft actually flew past it in 1959. So who would have known? Just fun facts. All right, so moon and the doshas. So here we are. So how does it impact us as counselors, right? So there is a basic association that is drawn um, that the moon influences our water element, right? And that's why we started with the theory of the micro microcosm and microcosm, right? It, we know that the moon influences the way uh, tides rise and fall, right? And so our bodies are made up of 90% water. So obviously we're gonna be impacted the same way, right? By by the, the the lunar phases. This is something like really, if your clients who you're working with, if they're open to this, it really helps put things in perspective. Because like sometimes I'm at work and it's like I'm just having a really off day, and I'm just like beating myself up. Like, okay, Debbie, what's going on in the environment? Okay, a cold front blew through. Or I look out the window. Okay, it's storming. It's you know raining. You know high winds. Well, no wonder. I'm so I don't. It's to me, it's like okay, I'm not going crazy. Like there's other forces outside of me that are influencing how I'm feeling right now. So it's reassuring to me when I'm when I consider that um, that it's not just you know me. Um, so the moon really does have um, a soothing and calming effect on our body mind complex. On the opposite end, um, if you've ever worked in different kind of settings and healthcare settings, we know I worked with the midwives um, in a birth center. And this is when I was going to nursing school, um, my through the RM program. And whenever I had the night shift, like I knew we were just gonna have more mamas coming in, you know, whether it's false labor or more, more babies born. I worked as an emergency room clerk at, uh, early, long time ago when I was very, very young. I couldn't do it because the night shift, I could, my body couldn't adjust, but we knew. And that's when we had more car accidents, more people came in um, with, you know, mental health issues. Like it's a real thing. Yep. Yeah, full moon. Yes. <laughs> Jesse's reminding us there's parasite, more parasites in the full moon. <laughs> so
So uh, in terms of the way that the influence, the moon influence influences our mind, according to one theory, this interaction between the moon and our mind can actually cause the subconscious impressions to float up to our, our conscious mind um, without some of these impressions and memories having much relevance as part of a churning exercise is one theory. Um, it's a, a no neuroscience fact that the subconscious has a say over 95% of our life. And this causes turbulence in our mind. It can affect our mood, mess with our ability to think straight. Um, and it's possibly how this whole craziness or lunacy came to be linked with the moon. Um, and that's why the sages have really put emphasis on the need to engage you know, in practices and contemplations and going inwards during the full moon. Jayanti says, old people who are sick die close to the new moon or full moon. Are really sick and you're you So, so during, because we know that this full moon period is really going to have a really affect us um, mentally and emotionally and even physically, um, this is a really good time to build resilience around the full moon with nourishing sweet foods, unctuous foods, um, foods that were more sattva, right, your dates and your ghee. Um, and so um, just wanted to point that out. But like Manjulati mentioned, that there is really a strong association. How many of y'all have already purchased Manjulati's book? Uh, so the other, the, the other one, the, the, both of them, the, the divine feminine. Yeah. So she does a really, really good job of talking about the association between the moon and our cycles. And my daughter actually, um, I, she got the book and she was able to sync up with the moon based on the recommendations. So. And also like a really fact that myself in the constitution, it's really good to get some information on that. So the the so we really want to consider how the moon um, really influences our body. So in terms of even regulating our emotions, and I think we've kind of talked a little bit about that, but it affects your prana, right? Our life force, right? The new moon phase um, can have you feeling gloomy, but you may uh, you may experience too much prana or energy and excitement on full moon days. It's equally important to be conscious of the change in prana levels so you don't overexert yourself like you were talking about, in, yeah. right? In terms of the your yoga practice. Um, and so again, when you're working with clients, just keep, this is just another piece of, of information you keep on the back of your mind. Helps with conception. And you know that's why we're talking about how our cycles and I'll briefly talk about it in the next slide, I think. Um, but Manjulati does a really, in that book, does a really good job of, of um, describing uh, the connection between the female cycle and um, how we can align ourselves more with the cycle so that it actually helps not only in having regular periods but then also with conception as well um, and then of course uh, helps with uh, menopause and so it's not just having to do with fertility right um, but just really looking at how we incorporate like just simple like moon bathing right um, because that can actually have a very calming um, and soothing effect, especially if you're having a lot of uh, heat, a lot of hot flashes, right, during this time. So do y'all know what moon bathing is? Okay. Moon bathing? Okay. Yep. Yep. You yeah, you're just like, it's like, so if you're going to sunbathe, right, you're laying out right on a lawn chair or on your blanket during at the beach, you do the same thing under the full moon. So it's very, very, very cooling and very um, calming for your mind. So just, you not <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so I created.
you can take a walk in your neighborhood if you don't want to lay out like under the moon but you can you can just walk in your neighborhood under a full moon yeah they're, they're just gonna think you're outside relaxing under the moon they're not gonna know what you're doing or you can just walk in your neighborhood under the moonlight right <laughs> You what? Oh my gosh, how beautiful. Dinners in the moonlight. That's That's so beautiful. And now the now that it, before it gets too hot, now would be the time to do it. So moon is said to be the controller of rasa or juice in plants, right? And it also influences the rasa in our body, the plasma, right? And that's why um there's there's such a strong association with the women's cycle. Rasa datu is we know is the key for the women's um, health, right? It influences menstruation, but also lactation, right? So Rasa Datu is represented as the plasma that all of y'all know who are graduating, body fluids, the interstitial fluid and the limb from the body. And it's a secondary byproduct of Rasa Datu is the menstrual blood, right? And lactation in nursing women. So when Rasa is imbalanced, menstrual bleeding is likely to be regular. Um, you're gonna have the, those PMS symptoms are gonna be easier to manage. Um, and so just really, really strong association and different recommendations that you can work with your clients. If this is something that you wanna specialize in because some people who just specialize in women's health. So this is moon bathing. Um, you and y'all can read this at your leisure, but um, they say moon bathing can also benefit you by making vitamin D available to your body, increasing ojas or vitality, balancing pitta, reducing inflammation because it's cooling, right? So the pitta balancing actually when she imbalanced her pitta, basically, and she did her prettiness very one cycle. Why don't we talk about like grounding more, like earthing? Is that like not really a thing for that? I mean, I think it, it well, it is because we, I, it's yeah. Like just, yeah, just earthing or grounding, whatever. And so, so okay. So then, tell me, who would y'all recommend that to? Avanta, uh, exactly. You, they need to be con they they need to be connected with the earth, right? And so, yeah, earthing and grounding and walking barefooted in the backyard is definitely an easy recommendation you can offer your clients. And traditionally, don't you walk barefoot? Yeah, because they're connected. Oh no, I I understand it. Just like you're talking about like moon bathing and stuff like that. Like, She moved out. Of, she moved out of Texas. I'm still flying all the time, but she So I've just been walking on the beach every day. They talk about the beach walk can keep your back more. I'm like not even looking at water for 20 minutes a day. I was just wondering why we why that's not like a, a deep. I know we talk about like eating in the world outside and like changing your scenery to be more in nature, but I think there's I don't know. I'm I'm now I'm like really big on parasites and feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. the beach, if you have water in the soil, then it is not much of a grounding sensation. You lay out so that you don't have to be water for the water. But the other big part is the ocean sensations, which you have to talk about. Like that makes sense. Dry, dry. So y'all, we've got like five minutes left because I want to make sure it's okay. It's great. It's a great conversation. So um, I want to make sure that y'all walk away with your bath salts for the next full moon. So full moon meditation, definitely. Um, it's really good for um, activating the pineal gland, which is associated with the moon. Um, this is a really great recipe for silver porridge. Um, so this is an Indian dessert recipe. Um, and so uh, it's prepared on full moon nights, and then it's left outside under the full moon and then consumed the next morning. Um, so if there's a recipe, if y'all would like to try that.
there's a recipe for moon milk. Um, I found this recipe, I've personally, and I've drank it. I've just never tried it with maple syrup. And I don't know if that's, uh, for, you like the maple syrup? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then actually uh, the full moon is considered to be a really auspicious time to make ghee. Um, I think all of y'all have already made ghee. And the counselor students, have y'all made ghee yet? Okay. Um, and then here's another recipe, here's another recipe for uh, or idea for moon tea, just adding some fresh flower petals um, and then leaving that, of course, in a covered uh, container outside, kind of like moon water, right? Um, and then there's associated mantra with it. Then uh, Manjulali gave us a, uh, a detox spices um, using kapha warming and scraping formulas um, that correspond with the certain days, the lunar days, and that's on the slide as well. And now we get to have fun um, in making our uh, bath salts. And so this is gonna be shared with everybody on Zoom so y'all can make your own. Here's more information about the full moon, which we've talked about. So your full moon uh, bath ritual kit, we're gonna make a rose and hibiscus bath salt. Um, and then just encourage you to treat yourself to your favorite tea, light a candle and just a really Are nice- you there? So yep. I'm gonna set it up. Yep. There. Sorry. So while Manjalali gets this set up, are you gonna take the camera? No, I'm just gonna take everything. Do this. That's not me, it's the tape farting, yes. <laughs> So, oh, right. That's me. That's <laughs> me. Okay. So um, there's the, the list of ingredients. Um, I actually picked up the 